All right, welcome to Mr. Baker's House of Knowledge. Today we're going to talk about different ways to prove triangles congruent. First of all, how do we know that two triangles are congruent based on what, we, what we've talked about yesterday? Uh, Faith, how do you know that two triangles are congruent? Okay, so if the lengths are equal, so when you're talking about lengths, I'm hoping that means sides and angles. So if all three sides of a triangle and all three angles of a triangle are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent. Today we're actually going to look at some shortcuts and realize that we don't really need all of that information. For example, in this picture right here, um, with the given information that we have, we know that angle B is congruent to angle E and angle C is congruent to angle F because those are marked. Okay. Now, we also know that angle A will be congruent to angle D. Kiana, how do we know that? Yeah, how, how did I know that angle A and angle D are actually congruent to each other? Because it wasn't given. So if I were wanting that as a response for a reason on a proof, we would say third angle theorem. And the third angle theorem says if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angle is congruent. That's pretty neat. Third angle theorem, and we're talking about the third angle. Zepp, you like what I did there, buddy? Isn't that neat? Yeah, you're thinking that's neat. I know you're thinking that. All right, so how would we decide if the sides have equal, equal length? Has anybody got any idea about that? How would we know if the sides have equal length in this particular picture? Well, one of the things is it's on a graph. So what can we do if it's on a graph? Some of them we can count. We can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for EF. We know that EF has a length of 5. We can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for FD. FD is equal to 5. The rest of them I'm going to have to use the formula on. Okay, so if I wanted to know BC, um, I would look at 2, 5 is B's coordinate. And I would look at 6, 8 is C's coordinate. And I could plug that into the distance formula, and BC would equal uh, 6 minus 2 squared plus 8 minus 5 squared, which is 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is 16 plus 9, which is 25. So if I take the square root of 25, I get that BC is also equal to 5. But if you, if you knew that uh, EF and FD were the same as uh, AC and CD, wouldn't you, wouldn't you not have to work it out? So the question is, if I know that the angles are the same, does that automatically make the sides the same? Is that your question? Yes. Let's, that's, that's a really interesting question. So let's explore that situation. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. So I'm going to draw a triangle, and I'm going to make it a right triangle. And I guess I'm going to make it with sides I can actually see. That might not even be a right triangle. So what I'm going to do with this triangle right here is I'm going to take a picture of it. And then I'm going to rotate it. Now in this case, these two triangles are congruent, right? 
because all the sides are the same and all the angles are the same. However, am I changing the angle measure if I make this triangle? Well, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me move it to where I can. Let's just make it larger. So I'll just make it larger by doing this. Okay. Did I change the angle measures any? So these are all still the same angle measures as these. However, do you think that the two triangles are congruent now? No. The two triangles aren't congruent because the second one is obviously bigger. And if I put this one over that one, now all the sides aren't the same length anymore. So just having the three angles being the same isn't enough information to say that the two triangles are congruent. Remember, the rule is everything has to be congruent. And I just showed you an example where if I have an angle, angle, angle congruent to an angle, 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 that doesn't necessarily mean that the two figures are going to be congruent. Now we're going to learn that there are some shortcuts where you can say that, but this is not one of them. So that was a good, a good kind of opening question here. All right, so let's go back to this. All right, so um, I, I use the distance formula to find out that BC is 5. By the way, if you go through and you use the distance formula, you'll find out that BC is 5. You'll find out that CA is 5. You'll find out that BA is the square root of 50. And then you'll find out that ED is the square root of 50. So you can use the distance formula to find out that all the sides are the same. Therefore, the, the two triangles are congruent. Now, what I want to explore today is I want to explore some ways in which we don't need all six pieces of information. We have less information. And if we have less information, then we can say that the two figures are congruent because based on what we have, it automatically means the other three things are going to be true as well. So angle, angle, angle was not one of those situations because I can resize the triangle. However, if you have side, 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 if all your sides are the same length, then when you put those three lengths together to form a triangle, if I give you the same three lengths, there's no way you can put a triangle together that isn't congruent to another triangle. So there's a postulate. We're not going to prove this because it's a postulate called side, side, side. And side, side, side says if you have three corresponding sides of one triangle congruent to three corresponding sides of another triangle, then those two triangles will be congruent. So this is a note card. We're going to act, act when I'm completely done talking to you about triangle congruency, we're going to have five ways to prove triangles congruent. This is the first one. Side, side, side. And you can just simply abbreviate it SSS. So that could be a reason and a proof. SSS. And that means side, side, side postulate for the triangles. All right, so how would that work? Let's look at this triangle down here. And this triangle down here, it's given that the top side and the bottom side are congruent. It's given that the left side and the right side are congruent. We're not given any information at all about any of the angles. But what do you know about this diagonal line LN? What do you know about LN? LN is shared. So can we say that LN is congruent to LN? How? Reflexive. So by the reflexive property, the shared side is congruent to itself. So now I have one pair of sides, two pair of sides, and the shared side makes the third pair of sides. So I now have a side, side, side situation. So I know that that triangle is congruent by side, side, side. Can I get a that's cool? That's cool. All right. Then there's one called side angle side. So side angle side is a little tricky. It also should be a note card. Side angle side needs to reflect the fact that we have two sides that are congruent and there's an angle 
that's congruent, but it has to be in between the sides. If that angle is not in between the sides, side angle side does not work. So be very, very careful. The angle must be in between the sides. So uh, angle A is, they call that being included between angle B, A, and angle A, C. So if BC is included between uh, angle B and angle C. So whatever letter they share, the included angle is the letter that they share. So if I'm talking about EF and DF, what's the included angle? No, DF and EF, which letter was repeated? F. If I'm talking about DE and DF, which letter is repeated? DEDF. Which letter did I repeat? D. If I'm talking about BC and AB, which letter did I repeat? B. So B would be the included angle. So the side angle side postulate says, hey, guys, these two triangles will be congruent if we have a side angle side situation. Two congruent sides and an included congruent angle. So that should be two new note cards you make tonight. Three so far for this chapter, this unit. The first one was the third angles theorem. The second one is side, side, side postulate. And the third one is side, angle, side postulate. All right? So what does all that mean now that we have all these cool postulates? Well, we can use them to do proofy stuff. For example, what other information do you need to prove for triangle D, E, F, to be congruent to triangle F, G, D. So they're asking for additional information that you would need to be able to use that postulate to justify that those triangles are congruent. Well, if I want to use side, angle, side, I need two sides and an included angle. Marked, I have one side congruent to another side. Can I say that DF is congruent to itself? I can. Faith, what property would that be? Reflexive. So now, if this side is congruent to itself and that side is congruent to that side, I want you to get with your partner and I want you to tell me what the two included angles are that would need to be congruent. So turn and figure that out with your partner right now and I'm going to call on one of the groups to see if you guys got it right. So you and your partner get to figure it out. And remember, you need to name the angle accurately. Emily, what did you guys come up with? Well, so to have side angle side, we need two sides, which we've got, and an included angle, which we don't have. So if I'm going to use side angle side, I need to figure out what the included angles are. So FDG is this angle right here. And EFD is this angle up here. Yes. So if angle uh, E... F D is congruent to angle F D G, then the two angles, the two triangles will be congruent by side angle side. So that's exactly what you needed. All right, with you and your partner, I want you to take a look at this one right here, and I want you to answer the question: What other information do you need to prove that the two triangles are congruent? by side angle side. All right, Hannah, you guys were chatting a lot back there. What did you guys come up with? So LE and NB. If we knew that LE and NB would be were congruent, then we would know that the two triangles are congruent by side angle side. Is that what you're saying? Why did you choose LE and NB and not LN and EB? or LB in itself. Yeah, we already know that that's congruent by reflexive, right? We got the angles marked. So why choose NB and LE as opposed to LN and EB?
Could you choose LN and EB? Terrence, what do you guys think? Right. So the reason you, ch you chose the correct line, and I hope the reason that you chose this correct line was because choosing this line is what gives you an included angle. And Zepp, what is an included angle? What's the definition of an included angle? An included angle is an angle in which um, the letter is shared by both of the sides. It's the vertex of the other two sides. So I know that L is included between LE and LB because L is in LE and LB. If I look at line segment LE and I look at line segment LB, the L was included in both of them. That's why this is the included angle. Does that make sense? All right. All right, so here's what I want you to do. With your partner, I want you to go through and I want you to, um, well, I'll, I'll go through and, and talk about A, B, C, and D, and then with your partner, I want you to do the got it down here. So let's talk about, could you use SSS or SAS to prove the two triangles are congruent? Here I would use SSS because I don't have this third side. There's no way to know this third side is congruent to the other side. But I do have a side, an included angle, and another side congruent to a side, included angle, and another side. That is textbook SAS. So this would be, yes, they're congruent by SAS. So on your homework tonight, you'll have these pictures, and you'll have to decide whether or not they're congruent, and then you'll have to tell me why. Here, this is not SAS. Can anybody tell me why it's not SAS, even though you have two congruent sides and a congruent angle? Does anybody have an idea why SAS doesn't work? Christian. Right. So in this one, the angle is not the included angle. If I were to move this angle up here and it were congruent at this point, then I would be okay. But this angle is not in between these two sides, so SAS won't work for this. It almost looks like it, like it will, but it fails. All right? What about C? C is a textbook side, side, side. And then D, I could use side, 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 or I could use side, angle, side. Side, side, side is obvious because all of the sides are marked. Why can I use side, angle, side in this one? Yeah. Right. So you have vertical angles congruent. So you know that that angle would be congruent to that angle. So you have a side, angle, side, and a side, angle, side. All right, you and your partner work together. Got it, number three. Be very, very careful about this one. Tell me whether it's congruent, and if it is congruent, tell me which one you can use. Based on the information given, can you prove by SSS or SAS? Or can you use both? Or are they not congruent? They're not congruent. Why don't you think they're congruent? Because both of these two things fail. I can't find three sides congruent to three sides, or I can't find a side and included angle in a side. Say so what? Oh, you didn't get that far. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Right. So absolutely you can use SSS. If you have three different sides marked congruent to three different sides, if I just take this triangle and I rotate it around to where the double mark is on the bottom, then they would orient the same way, and you could see that that matches up with that, that matches up with that, and that matches up with that. There is no way you can arrange triangles 
to where if you have three different marked congruencies and three different marked congruencies, that it won't be congruent when you, when you, I mean, you just can't do it. So the answer is yes, side, side, side does work. With the information given, you can't use side angle side because you have the two marquee and the three marquee here for the angle, but you have the one marquee and the two marquee here for the angle. So the included angle isn't between the same set of congruent sides. Now it just so happens that because these two triangles are congruent, the other stuff would be congruent because once you know that two triangles are congruent, then you can apply the definition of congruency and everything else falls into place. All right, so that's it for the lesson today. Your homework.